You're listening to the Building Psychological Strength Podcast, Professional Edition. My name is April Seifert. Not only am I a doctoral level psychologist, but I've been a successful entrepreneur for a number of years and have learned firsthand that building psychological strength can have a direct impact on your professional success. In this Friday edition of the podcast, I'll offer you tools, tips, tricks, and information to help you become stronger, more resilient, and more successful. Let's get to it. Doug Cooper said, identity cannot be found or fabricated, but emerges from within when one has the courage to let go. This is going to be a deep and meaty episode. We're going to do a little bit of exploration today. Before we get into that though, I want to make just a really quick announcement and let you guys know of some changes that are happening over here behind the scenes at the podcast. So I have slowly been working with folks one-on-one over time for quite a while now, actually. And it's something that I have come to really value and really enjoy. The transformations that people can make when they're in a relationship with someone, a third party who can help challenge assumptions and help think through complex situations, help craft a path forward, help us stay focused on making decisions that are right for us. That relationship is absolutely transformative and invaluable. And because of that, I'm making that more of a defined part of my work. So what I'm saying is, if any of you are in that position where you are feeling like maybe you're going through a change or a transition, or maybe things are complex or not quite where you want them to be right now, and you're ready to work with somebody to help take you to the next level, I would be so honored to be that person. It's been fun because the people that I've been working with range from folks who are looking to create a personal brand. They're looking to make a career change and looking to put themselves out there in a big, bold, authentic way that truly showcases who they are so that future employers are attracted to that person so that their future job is more likely to be aligned to who they are. And the life design process and just the design process coupled with some psychology is incredibly powerful in helping people do that. So that has been so much fun. Also, working with people through transitions. Oh my gosh, there's some good meaty work to happen there. And what can happen when we're going through transition, actually we're going to talk about that a little bit more on this episode. What can happen when we go through transitions is that we can easily start to grasp When we're in situations that feel, I love to use the word VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, V-U-C-A, VUCA situations, we feel unmoored, we feel out of control, and we begin to start grasping to try to create control. And when that happens, when we're just randomly grasping with the goal of creating control, rather than intentionally seeking with the goal of finding a good fit, we can end up in a position that isn't the right one for us simply because it was stable. And we lose the opportunity that comes from a transition because it allows us to move forward in maybe a slightly different direction than we have before. I've been working with people in that capacity and that has been incredibly rewarding. And then the third group I would say are folks who have, say, a defined struggle in Mostly, it's their professional career. Maybe they're having a difficult time delegating. Maybe they're having a difficult time uh, seeing themselves as the leader that they need to be in order to meet the challenges that are new and facing them in either their role or their business. There's a lot that can step in our way psychologically in those situations and set us up to not achieve the success that is absolutely possible for us to achieve. 
So that's the third group of folks that I've been working with, and it has been so rewarding and so fun, and people are getting amazing results, and I am loving it, which is why I'm making it a bigger part of the work that I'm doing going forward. If this seems at all interesting to you, you can head over actually to my personal website, and I'll link it below in the episode description to make it easier, but you can head over to aprilseifert.com. And right on the top, there is a button in the header of the website that says get started. Shoot me a note. Let me know what you are interested in working on. Most likely we'll set up a quick discovery call so that we can chat and we'll be off to the races. It has been so rewarding. And I know in addition, I've been working with a coach myself and I've also seen firsthand from the flip side of the coin, how valuable that can be. And so I'm really excited about this next chapter, and I'm so pumped to bring you guys along with me. All right, let's dig into this week's professional topic. I want you to imagine with me that you are at a happy hour or a cocktail party, and you are introducing yourself to somebody new. How many times do you find yourself saying something like, oh, I'm the director of human resources at Johnson and Company, right? I'm the, insert your title, of, insert your department, at, insert your company. So many times when we introduce who we are, a big portion, if not all of that, is wrapped up in our jobs and our titles. We see them as so intertwined. And a lot of the time, this can be completely fine and be really good, actually. But I want to focus on something that is happening a lot right now where this can get in the way. Specifically, right now, there is we're at the beginning, and there's a lot of people who are predicting this, and you can see it out there in the marketplace, but we're at the beginning of a major, what's being called migration in our professional lives. We've been through a year and a half of a transformative experience. For one, for whatever reason, each of us individually, so I don't say whatever reason, like I have no idea what that might be, but I don't know what yours are. But throughout this COVID situation, we all have had to confront what it actually means for us to be alive and what our contribution, what we want it to be, how we want our lives to be what we want to spend our time on and what we don't. And as a result of all that contemplation, it is nearly impossible for change and migration to not happen. When people get intentional and they start to evaluate what they actually want, you start to see a path forward that is more clear than it would have been had you not gone through that exercise. P.S. That's also something that people do during coaching that is incredibly transformative. Anyway, so You go through this experience that we've all had in the last year and a half, and you start to see a crystal clear path to get to something that is more aligned with who you are, except we see so much of ourself wrapped up in our title and in our role and in our current circumstances that sometimes that can cause friction, it can cause inertia, for us to stay or move in the direction that we have been going versus changing direction and going down that new path, even if that new path feels crystal clear. There's something in the field of psychology called role engulfment. This is when we have a role and, you know, in your personal lives, you play roles too. I mean, maybe you're a parent or you're a spouse to somebody or you're a caretaker to someone who's sick or an elderly parent. Tons of ways that role can show up in your personal life. And we'll probably do some episodes on Wednesdays about uh, that as well. But in your job, especially in the United States, so my United States audience, you will likely find this very resonant. We wrap our identity up in our job. And it's even beyond just how we're performing. It's not, I'm good at it. It's more than that. It's deeper. It's who I am. And when we see our identity wrapped up in something, 
One of the scariest things for our ego is to lose identity, to lose touch with an important aspect of our identity. That's one of the most, like a big upheaval psychologically for us. Talk about, you know, at the beginning I said when we're in these uncertain circumstances, we start to grasp, right, randomly to try to find, uh, you know, stability again and certainty again. That happens when we lose touch with an important part of our identity. Now, I'm going to make kind of a distinction here just in how I'm going to talk about this on this episode. When I talk about identity, what I'm talking about is the information your mind has learned about what it means to be you. What I'm not talking about is the core essence of who you truly are. Just for funsies for this episode, we'll call that your, the self, your true self. Set your true self aside. Cognitively, your mind learns about who you are and forms this body of knowledge about, okay, who is April? Who is she? And the word entrepreneur for me gets very wrapped up in that identity. And for other people, again, in the United States, our job and our title, our level in a company gets very wrapped up in our identity. And the risk of losing that identity can cause us to stay where we are, even if that place is no longer where we want to be. You can see why I'm talking about this right now, right? Because we've got this huge migration starting in our professional lives where people are going to be shuffling between companies and changing industries because they've realized that where they've been is not in alignment with who they truly are, the self. But when we experience this role engulfment, we can actually lose touch with that sense of self. We can lose touch with the connection that we have with who we really are at our core. And instead, we operate in this cognitive place of what is my mind telling me about who I am? Not deep down in my core, who am I actually? I told you we were going to get deep on this episode. So, As a reflection exercise, as something to do this week, if you are one of those people who are in the position where you're looking at your life prior to COVID and you're saying, no, I got to make some changes. This is not the direction that I want to be going in after COVID. This is not what what I see myself doing. I don't think this is my purpose. This context or these people or these... Um, requirements or obligations, they don't fit for me anymore. If that describes you, I want to give you the gift of this amazing question. I mentioned that I'm personally working, working with a coach right now that she gave to me. And the question was, if everything fell away, all of it, your family, your friends, your job, your everything, and all that was left was you. Who would you be then? And now I'll be honest, the first time I sat down to think about that question, literally nothing came up. Talk about role engulfment, right? Nothing came up. I couldn't think about who I might be. And as I carried that around with me for a little while and let it kind of rattle around in my head, what I came to and maybe this helps you answer this question, but I came to some basics of psychology. If Even if everything fell away, if all of it was gone, I still have a set of personal values. What are they? What do I value? Who do I want to be in the world? Who would I naturally show up as? Even if all the rest of this wasn't there, who would I be? And what are the things that I would be called to do even if I had no job, even if money wasn't an object? Like what are the things that I would be called to do that I would feel compelled to do simply because that's who I am? And when I started to piece that that question apart, 
truthfully, that question that I, you know, mulled over a couple of months ago or whatever, weeks and weeks ago, was what led me to the decision to expand the work that I've been doing with people one-on-one. Because flat out, I would be teaching people these principles. If this podcast fell away and suddenly it was gone and I couldn't do it anymore, which would be devastating. I would be so sad not to hang out with you guys every week. But if it fell away, I would still be teaching these principles and sharing them somehow, even if it was just in one-on-one conversations with people. I would still be doing it. I would still be thinking about how do I apply these things to other people's lives. And I went down a giant rabbit hole, which basically led to, you need to expand this one-on-one practice. And that's why I'm doing it. And so again, if you're interested in that, click the link in the episode description, aprilseifert.com, click the button, shoot me a note, and we'll figure out where to go from there. But for you, thinking about your path forward, who would you be if everything else fell away? And if you think about what COVID has taught you personally, forget about everyone else. Just focus on you, the main character of your life. What has COVID taught you recently or throughout the last year and a half? And how can you put those two things together when you think about where you will go next? Maybe this Transition doesn't happen overnight. It likely won't. Big sweeping changes don't tend to happen in a big sweeping way. But incrementally, how can you start making changes in your career or in your life? But this is Friday, so let's talk career. In your career to start moving that work in alignment with who you are, who you really are, the self, not the identity piece that your mind learned, not the role engulfment that's stuck in your old job or position that you might not be interested in doing anymore. I really hope this was helpful, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me for this professional edition of the Building Psych Strength podcast. If you're an entrepreneur or a business professional and you're interested in becoming more successful, hit the subscribe button. And until next week, be strong, be resilient, and be successful. Thank you.